Hey, welcome back to the Minimax channel, um, where uh, you've been watching me build my um, 1100R with a modification for that guy, Half VW. And I have a lot of things um, I can be doing today. Um, and before I get started with that, though, I have a couple of um, unfinished items for a couple of you. Um, some requests that I need to fulfill. One of them was, what is the inflated height of these tires? So here you go. I'm going to get that measurement here. Um, all right, so the uh, inflated height, and I've got them maybe, maybe 8 pounds in them, maybe 10 pounds, something like that. <clears throat> 13 and 3 quarter inches um, is the height of that tire, so that takes care of that. And then um, I wanted to um, get some measurements of the uh, tail spring, and I will uh, let me get a tape measure here, and I'll get that, and I will be right back. Okay, Robert, we'll get you this. Uh, Get you this overall length first. Uh, four inches to where the bend stops. And then we are six and a half to where the bend starts. And then we are three and three quarters, roughly, to the end. So that's 13 and three quarters. All right, I'll just do it one more time. Four. Ten and a half. Thirteen and three quarters. All right, overall length, 13 and three quarters. It is... Um, five sixteenths chromoly, and let's see, it is an inch and a quarter wide. And I can tell you that this rake angle is um, eighty five degrees, so it's five degrees off of vertical. Uh, let's get uh, let's get what these radiuses are for you. So, just so you have those. All right. So the first angle is about thirty-two degrees. Thirty, yeah, about thirty-two. And then the next angle I have to do this one on the bottom. The next angle is just slightly more about uh, about thirty three and a half. Uh, let's see let me try this again. Let's make sure. All right, it's actually 35. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, let me know uh, if you have any other questions and I'll uh, answer those for you. So, okay, tire height, tail spring dimensions, we're good to go. All right, so what I'm gonna do first today is I'm going to uh, get the finishing tapes on here and as soon as those are dry, we'll be able to uh, fill the weave on this one. Um, and while that's, drying we're going to begin painting the uh, stabilizer and the rudder the, the vertical stab and the rudder so we'll be uh, and then hopefully when those are dry and done then the elevator will be actually dry and ready for paint so and then while that's kind of all going on um, I'm going to get the uh, 
uh, facet pump put in the plane um, so that I can begin to hook up some of the fuel lines in there and uh, have a whole host of other little things I can do while I'm waiting for uh, paint to dry and, and all that. So we'll kind of get in a sequence here today where we can kind of roll through that. I've ordered my new Lexan um, and uh, I was going to show you this uh, definitely took the scratch out that was in here but what it did is it uh, at the same time it bulged it and so when I tried the other side it actually bulged it much worse so <laughs> over here so I have to replace these um, but that's no big deal this this that's it's why it's the way it is you drill them out replace the use this old one as a template for the new one drill the holes cut it put it in so no big deal um, I mean, sure, it's not time I was planning on spending, but uh, I want it nice and clear, so nice and clean. And I probably could have just lived with that little scratch that was there and maybe got some compound to take it out or whatever, but I tried something new. It didn't work for me. It worked for the guy on the video. It didn't work for me. Maybe he was had a thicker poly than I do. Uh, I didn't think about that. This is pretty thin at 060. But anyway, um, I'll stop chatting and I'll get to work here and we'll start by uh, getting some finishing tapes. Before I put the finishing tape on, I just need to go around, make sure all my uh, edges are, are glued down good, make sure the ribs are all glued um, with the iron, and then I can begin the finishing tape process. And uh, yeah, we'll rock on. I'll do the, do the trailing edge. Um, and this time I think I'm actually going to do the... Uh, yeah, I'm going to do the trailing edge first, then I'm going to do the leading, or the tips, and then I'll do the leading edge. And, uh, yeah, let's do it. So things are drying nice and fast today, which is going to help me a lot. So um, what I'll do is wait for this to uh, completely dry, and then I'll come back and uh, um, I'll just iron these down here against the gussets. And once I get those, uh, once I get those ironed down, then I'll iron this kind of over the edge. I'll roll the iron like this over the edge and kind of get that turned under. And once I get it turned under, then I'll go to the other side and apply the tape there. So you've, uh, you've seen me do a lot of covering so far. So the uh, risk is that it just becomes uh, mundane and boring. And uh, so I'm, I'm just trying to show you um, some highlights of that process. So uh, it, uh, it's just part of it, right? I mean, so. I don't want to just, you know, not show you anything for a while. So, hey, if you're bored of covering, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a lot of it. So, now while this is drying, I've got to make room so I can paint um, over there. So, I've got a little cleanup work to do. So, I'm going to get that taken care of real quick and then uh, we'll be able to start doing some painting.
All right, so I got my paint mixed up uh, over here. So I'm gonna do this, I mean, the same procedure that we were doing before. It's gonna be two coats of brown um, and, then, uh, and then two coats of green and another coat of brown. So I'll uh, kind of just run through that same, that same thing that we did before. So I'll get the first side uh, painted, then while that's drying, um, I will be able to jump back over here and actually get this, uh, get this rolled over and start putting the uh, glue on the other side of that finishing tape, and I'll just be able to work back and forth on that. And um, we'll, get a, we'll make some good progress today. Ho hopefully we can get this vertical stab completed so that I can actually get it mounted to the stab and get it put on the plane. That's the goal. Um, I have the uh, two coats of paint on the first side of the uh, stab and rudder there, and uh, now I'm putting the uh, tip fabric on because I've got both sides of uh, this done. I rolled it over and I glued it down, and now I'm doing the, uh, the tips, so I thought I would show you um, how I do this. Uh, Sounds like a sling, <laughs> a Rotex uh, powered airplane, I think. Uh, so how I do these tips is I just start by putting the, uh, putting the glue on here. And I did the other side um, already so that I can show you the second, second step. And once the glue's on, then I just center this up. Center this up on here. Like that. Center it on the tip. Like so. And then just like you've seen me do on everything else, um, we go ahead and brush that in. Because uh, like here, the fabric is saturated, but here it's not. You can tell uh, it's got, you can see some of the white. So that's what you want to make sure you take care of is that the fabric's completely saturated. So. Take and just take and wipe that off. The excess off so we don't have any ridges there. And then we'll leave that one to dry and then we'll jump to the other side. All right, for this part, um, pretty much goes like uh, everything else. I just get, a, get an idea of where I need glue. Um, just start in this front area here, make sure that's all good. Here I just like to use my finger because I can put some pressure on this and kind of rub it out and uh, I can kind of roll over this corner right here. All right. 
And then when we get to, to the back edge, um, I go ahead and do the same thing. I put the, uh, the, put the glue down, except I know I'm gonna need a little more here. And what we do here is uh, once I get this pulled over, I'm actually gonna pull on it, giving it some tension here. And by doing that, it's conforming. You can see it's starting to lay down right there. So I'm just tugging on it, and it just ends up laying right down. And the fabric ends up just kind of curving, making a little bit of a curve there, but it fits perfectly. So like so. And then we do the same thing, we just wipe off the excess. And then once that's dry, we'll cut, uh, we'll cut this off, iron it under, uh, do the same on the other side. And that's, uh, that's how I do um, these tips where it tapers down, is uh, go about halfway, and then uh, where the, kind of where the curve starts. And then after that, then you can tug on that, and it just lays right down on there. All right, so I think uh, I can do this other side, and then um, it looks like our paint is uh, dry. So I'll be able to flip these over, and then we can uh, put the two coats on the other side. Uh, yeah, temperature in here today is perfect for all this stuff I'm doing. So, okay. Uh, yeah, catch up with you in a minute. All right, so I got the last of the uh, finishing tape on here. There is a couple of other, uh, I think I've got to add. I'm good, I'm good here for the, where the bolts are, but I may be good. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm just going to need a, uh, um, a little uh, reinforcement uh, patch where the... Uh, uh, where the elevator horn goes and uh, I'm gonna figure that out right now I've got two coats of paint on both sides of those so the next thing I have to do is I've got to clean out the holes um, in the stab to get it ready for uh, mounting the fin to so um, I will do that and I will get my little reinforcement patch put on it's kind of an oval shape. I'll make it just out of some two inch material. Um, I think my hole is, well, I'll have to find it, <laughs> but uh, yeah. All right, cool. Um, let's keep, uh, let's keep flying today. All right, <laughs> flying, <laughs> going fast flying. All right, so I've got the, uh, I got all my holes uh, cleaned out uh, for both mounting it to the fuselage and mounting the fin. And so now I am, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to, I need to figure out where my green is gonna come in here. So, because I've got a little, a little brown and a little green on this side. And then the other side is mostly green on the bottom. So uh, that side's easy because I know where the green, it, the green doesn't start and stop. It just, it's all the way across. So. Um, so now I'm going to get some green out, and uh, once I get the green out, I'll be able to figure out, um, just kind of make a couple really light lines so I have something to follow um, when, I, uh, when I get this taken care of here. So, and really it's just this one spot right here that I need to mark, because then I'm going to lay the rudder and the elevator down and mark out the, uh, mark out the green at the same time. So. Uh, yeah, so let me get some green going, and then we'll get this, uh, sounds like the cat's back. Um, I'll get, uh, yeah, get the green. Get that mixed up, get some, uh, Floetrol in it, and then we'll be able to jump to, uh, getting that, getting that taken care of, so... All right, here we go. All right, so I have the two of them together and I just made my mark. 
um, where this part meets the fuselage. And this is the uh, left side of the plane. Which means I gotta lock my phone so I can turn it around. Um, there's just a, a skin that I got off of uh, off of the internet, which was for like a, a flight simulator, some type of flight simulator game. That's what I'm actually using for my markings, in case you were curious what I keep looking at. That's it. So... All right, so I got the uh, I got the green on uh, on both sides. I have two coats of green on this side. Um, it's getting kind of dirty from this table, but touch that up in a few minutes. And I have one coat of green on this side, so I've got one more coat of green to do here. I have two coats of brown on this side, and I have to do one more coat of brown on the other side after I flip it over. Um, one more coat of green on this side, and then this side's done. Uh, then I'll be able to flip it, and then I had to uh, make an adjustment. I just carried the brown over this side um, because it wasn't working out the way it was, so I'll just go back and uh, pick up, uh, pick that up when I flip this over, so. But the, uh, the drying has slowed down, so um, it's kind of unfortunate, because I was doing so good. Um, it's starting to cool off a little bit in here. I was going to put the brown on on here, but I believe I'm going to have to wait until tomorrow for that because it's just not quite, uh, well, yeah, temperature's just not quite the way um, I want it, so. Uh, so, let's see here. That has to dry before I can do anything else. I got the green brush load it up to do the second coat of green on this side and uh yeah so um let me figure out what uh, what else i'm gonna do before um before moving uh before moving on and while waiting for that i'm really thinking about this brown i really could go ahead and paint some more brown um, and just see how it lays out it's actually it's doing pretty good here, but it just gets kind of thick in places, so I'm going to wait. There's plenty of other things we can do, so uh, yeah. So let's jump from where we are. I'll just get the green so that at least that's done. Um, and then we'll uh, flip over and, uh, and we'll, do, uh, we'll do something else since I have a little bit more time. Might as well get the most out of it. 
All right, oh, I know what we can do. I need to make the mount for my radio, so I think I'll jump to that and we'll do that. All right. All right, so I utilized the, uh, so the anchor nuts are uh, buried in the, uh, in the vertical stab as you, as you're aware, probably. The cat. Um, so the uh, these just get a uh, uh, a bolt and a washer on the bottom, and that holds that in place. And then we can uh, we can actually get the uh, we can get the tubes here and get those um, situated. And before I do that, I think I'm, I'm going to um, uh, I may wait to drill the holes in the uh, for the uh, hinges. Um, I got to put, I got to put a little more brown just right in here to kind of cover this uh, area a little bit. So I'll do that. So I've got to get the, got to get the drill out, and uh, got to locate this hole that goes through here, and then I've got to locate the two holes um, that are out here for. Should be one one here one over there and one there so i get those three holes drilled out so that i can get the tubes the support tubes in place i gotta locate those and the brackets um and uh we should be able to get to uh, get some good progress here on getting this uh on getting this assembled so at least to the point where we can get it on the uh, airplane which you know is what we're trying to do okay all right, so I'm getting the uh, tubes on now. I just had my had all my brackets marked nicely, so I will take a little bit of something on a rag when I'm done and clean up the tubes with all the lettering and stuff. Um, so I've, now I've got to get the tube on the other side, and then I'll once I get everything on, then I can go around and actually tighten up tighten up all the nuts and stuff. So, um, yeah. Uh, we're getting to the point exactly where we want to be so um, I do have to do the rudder I got to do a little more paint on the rudder but I can do that um, later this is already how I want it so uh, yeah so let me uh, get the other tube here let's get that over here uh, top right it's marked right there so, get the top in first. And once the top's in, we can swing around here and get the bottom. And since everything's been pre-fit before, just by marking it, we should end up with everything fitting correctly. And so far, so good. So I just got to get this one where it belongs here. And it helps to leave these lower brackets loose until you... Uh, until you're ready. So you have everything assembled, so. All right, it's all on. And now um, I'll go around and tighten those up and then we will swing it around and we will set it on here. Okay, so I just, uh, just did a uh, quick inspection here to make sure everything, um, Everything is in order before I uh, put the stab on here. And everything looks really good. Um, these cables are out, the bottom cables are out. They're all kind of uh, where they belong, so, so that's good. And there's nothing, I didn't leave anything in here. Um, 
everything looks really good. So now I'm going to put the stab on. Uh, one second here. All right, so the tail is all bolted on now. Um, nice and sturdy, looking good. Um, and uh, now <clears throat> the last thing I'm going to do before I have to take off is uh, I'm going to figure out where I ran this uh, where I ran this brown over here, and I've got to match. I have to match up the rudder <clears throat> to that. So let me grab that, and then we'll check it out since the rest of the paint's dry on here now. Uh, We can set that up here and match it up on this other side here. And we just have to bring our bring our rudder up to the whoops, bring our rudder up to the top. And I've got a mark right there. But I'm going to take a little bit on a brush and uh, just mark it out real quick. So let me grab that. All right, so one of the last things I'm working out is, is I was trying to figure out, do I want my radio here? I thought about putting it here, but I don't like it there. I like to keep this as, as clear as possible. So then I just decided that I can just install it like like in a fighter jet or something. I'm actually gonna put it like like right like right here. So I think this will uh actually work out pretty well and I can even cant it just a little bit um this direction. So so I have a triangle here that I'm gonna figure out kind of what angle I want. Then I'll use that to kind of make the mount. So that's about 90 degrees, and so that would be like this, which is going to be kind of difficult to see, so I really need it to be moved like that. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make myself an angle here. That's kind of what I think it should be. I think it should be something like about three degrees or so. So let me cut that. And then let's see how that sits in here. Okay, that's not quite enough. It actually needs to be about twice, twice what I've uh, what I've done. So let's take another three degrees. You hear me saying three degrees, and I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of eyeballing it, um, like I'm fully calibrated for three degrees. <laughs> I'm probably not. Okay, we can test it and see. All right, so let's check that one out. See how that one looks. And that is more like it. So if you look at it from the side, basically I can do it right from the top. It's giving us, it's giving us that angle, which I think is gonna be pretty good. But I'm going to do it one more time just to see how I feel about it. See how that looks. Okay. 
that's it right there. That's what I wanted. So it's tilting about that far. And I'll put it in here at an angle. Figure out exactly where I want it. And uh, that will be great. So save that for next time. Um, but uh, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Um, you know I appreciate it. And um, the uh, things are looking really good here. The progress. Whew. I, uh, um, I got an offer for a new job, um, which I'm going to take. And uh, I'll be working in uh, Pasadena um, starting next Monday. So a week from now will be my uh, start date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work like mad to just get as much as I can possibly get done this week while I still have this free time and see how far I can go. I would love to get some urethane on uh, one of these wings and potentially start covering it. So. Um, We'll see if I can get that far. I'm, I mean, I'm clearly going to get urethane on the wing because I'm, I'm, that's the stage I'm at now once this gets painted. But I can do the same thing. I can be urethaning that and painting this at the same time. So that's not a problem. Um, yeah. All right. So. Oh. So we'll try that again. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, it's been a good day, and uh, um, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll catch you later.